Hi everyone. Today I'm going to talk about sunscreens and I've got a whole load down here, most of which you can't see just now, just to talk about all the things that people are asking me about sunscreens, physical versus chemical sunscreens, um, ones that go well under makeup, ones that are good for darker skin, ones that can be used for top ups during the day, sort of natural sunscreens, a few special extra ones, some from specialist brands. Um, this could go on a while, so I may have to split it up into different videos. But anyway, here goes. First, you do need to wear sunscreen every day because the ultraviolet rays from daylight, normal old daylight, not just sunny sunshine, they will age your skin. And so I'd be happy if you're wearing sunscreen, any sunscreen here, are some basic everyday sunscreens. This is a CeraVe Facial Moisturising Lotion, SPF 30. I find that a bit creamy, but that's very straightforward. Altruist, um, this is a great brand. You'll have heard me going on about this before. It is very cheap, but that does not mean it's not good. Um, it's made by a dermatologist. Um, the aim is an altruistic one to help people protect their skin without spending very much money and to raise money for charity as well. That's a great one. Um, here's a Soli one from uh, Superdrug. Here is um, a Boots one, a number seven, Hydroluminous with SPF 15. They're all great. They're all very straightforward. Um, I'd be happy if you wear something rather than nothing. So how high an SPF do you need? Well, the SPF refers to how much UVB light a product will block. UVB are the burning rays, if you like. UVA are the longer wavelength aging rays. This is an SPF 15. Doesn't sound very much these days, but that will block about 93% of the ultraviolet rays, the UVB. That sounds pretty good. SPF 30 will block a little bit more. Um, SPF 50 will block about 98%. So it sounds like you're not getting very much more protection with a higher SPF like 50. But if you think of it in terms of how much UV light is actually getting past those sunscreens, then there's quite a lot more that's getting past the SPF 30 than the 50. And again, more again past the 15. So um, it's also the, the fact that most of us don't put on nearly enough sunscreen. We should be using a whole teaspoon, a kind of six milliliter teaspoon for our face and neck every day. And that's quite a lot because when they test sunscreens, they're tested at a thickness of two milligrams per centimeter squared, which is quite a lot. So it's better to wear a higher factor because you will then have more protection, particularly given that we don't put on enough in the first place. So a lot of you are asking about sunscreens that are good under makeup. And what you really want is something that is quite lightweight, that will dry down nicely, that won't leave a sticky finish. So here's a lot. Here is one of my favorites, long-term favorites, La Roche-Posay. This is the Antelios um, Extra Light SPF 50. It's a great one, it's quite moisturizing, but I've got combination skin, sits really well. This is another fab one from Beauty Pie, um, UVA, UVB, SPF 25. That um, is quite similar in finish to that, so it's moisturising. Then there are, I've got some really sort of dry finish ones here from Heliocare, which is a specialist brand. Um, there's an oil-free gel, that's great. You might prefer the water gel. It's not that watery, it's, um, it's more of a, a cream gel, but they, just vanish into the skin or oh, <laughs> there's this one here the air gel which um, it kind of comes out as a sort of foam and that again is vanishingly light on the skin so those are all good choices Bioderma another great brand I better rub this in hand I so you see how easily it goes and that there's no sort of tackiness to it and that will be gone in a, a sec because you know these things need time to settle in um, Bioderma, Photoderm AR, SPF 50, Photoderm AKN Matte. I like this one, it's, it, it's got a kind of mattified finish. It could do as a primer, it would go under makeup, it could be good on its own. This one, the Photoderm AR is very slightly tinted, but it's a very pale, super pale tint, looks a bit pale, might be a bit too pale on me. This is a specialist one, which you probably won't know, PCA Skin, but weightless, 
protection broad spectrum SPF 45 that's terrific don't know why it's SPF 45 and Paula's choice this is just lovely um, Paula does everything by texture in all her products so this is super light daily wrinkle defense that is an SPF 30 uh, this is really good on acneic skin as well if you're prone to break out then what else could we have for daily use? Oh, this, um, this, this is more of a beauty brand than a sunscreen brand. This is YSL Air Thin UV Defender SPF 50. This has got the thinnest formula. It's got a nozzle that you have to really squeeze to get it out because you see it's dripping like water. And I wasn't so keen on this because I find it, it it's a bit sort of silicon slippery on the skin but I was um, with a group of beauty journalists all great experts in this kind of thing and they all absolutely loved it so I was the only one in the room who didn't so you might well love it too and um, that again is super thin it's not going to feel clogging or claggy on the skin and it'll go nicely under makeup then what have I got here oh uh, a Murad this is Murad this is more of a a day cream with sunscreen in it, which is a slightly different creature to a sunscreen. This is their new vitamin C one. The one I wanted to find, which I thought I had, but I just can't lay hands on it, is the Murad Invisiblur, which um, works really well as a primer. And that, I think the Invisiblur is an SPF 30, could be a 50, probably a 30, but that one just, um, <laughs> hey, it blurs out imperfections, but also it gives really good protection as well. So I'll put that one on there. Um, I also had wanted a Clarins one, but the Clarins one that came in was this strange um, sort of UV gel for touching up your sunscreen, which I wouldn't want to wear that under makeup, but they've got a great dry touch face fluid, I think it's called, in their normal range. So this one, this Eucerin one, I find this quite nice under, under makeup, though it's it's slightly thicker than some of the others. It's pigment control SPF 50 it's actually got ingredients in it it's got studies to show that if you use this it will not only prevent future pigmentation from occurring in your skin which is what all sunscreen is doing but it will also take down some of the existing pigmentation so if you're struggling with pigmentation that is a good one to try one great talking point in sunscreens is should they be physical sunscreens or should they be chemical sunscreens which I don't like calling the chemical ones chemical because that sounds like you're setting them up to be demonized. You know, everything is made of chemicals. All the um, natural mineral sunscreens contain elements which have a chemical formula. So uh, we could call the, uh, the, we could call the chemical ones absorbing sunscreens and the other ones mineral ones. The absorbing sunscreens work by binding into the top of your skin, absorbing the light energy, converting it into heat and getting rid of it that way. And the mineral sunscreens, which are made of ground up um, titanium dioxide and zinc oxide, um, those work by sort of, well, the common perception is they work by scattering the light by reflecting it back. But in fact, they absorb a fair bit of the light energy as well. So. They're both absorbing things after a fashion. It's not such a clear divide between the both of them, but they work in different ways. They work in rather different ways. I mean, they're both forming a layer on the top of the skin, but the absorbing sunscreens tend to get a better grip on the skin and to provide better protection against UVA. Um, the mineral sunscreens tend to form more of a barrier on the top that is that is a bit easier to wipe off. So a lot of dermatologists say I wouldn't rely entirely on um, mineral sunscreens for that reason. Though equally plenty of doctors also say you should only use mineral sunscreens and some will say particularly if you have pigment issues you should use mineral sunscreens because of that light reflecting quality that they offer that they bounce the rays away rather than building up heat in the skin because if you have a condition like melasma um, many doctors and dermatologists will tell you that heat doesn't help the melasma though other dermatologists as one who's done a whole study of the past 10 years of literature on this will point out that heat doesn't appear to be a contributing factor in melasma though 
lots of people will shut me down for saying that. So I'm just putting it out there. There's a lot of different opinions and which is why I come back to saying I would just like you to wear sunscreen, preferably one that combines physical and chemical, physical and absorbing mm -hmm. sunscreens, but just wear it because you'll be helping your skin and the distinction between some of the elements in these is not quite as clear cut as it's often made out to be. I hope that wasn't too confusing. Um, and then, then there's the issue of whether products should be more natural or not. I mean, I don't think there's anything particularly natural about sunscreen, but if you want products made with more natural ingredients, well, some people would say mineral sunscreens are more natural. E-Cooking, this is a lovely brand. This is a natural Danish brand. Here is Green People. That's, that's nice enough. I find a lot of the, the sort of greener sunscreens, it has a bit of a a strange slip to it. Here's an organic pharmacy one, you know, if you, it's a preference if you want your products to be, uh, in quotes, natural. And these are, these are all sunscreens that will take you that way. I don't, whoops, I don't always like the finish of these so much. This is a Ren one, lovely brand, great product. It's slightly chalky, but it is a mineral sunscreen. Also, ah, there's the issue of whether these products are reef safe or not. What that's referring to is the fact that Hawaii has banned sunscreens containing a couple of uh, sunscreen filters, chemical filters called oxybenzone and octinoxate, because those are shown to be damaging to the coral. Though there's some debate around that. It's also not great generally wearing a lot of sunscreen and washing it off into the ocean, but that's Another issue, we should probably all be just wearing long sleeve protective UV swimwear rather than covering ourselves in sunscreen. Not that many of us are going swimming in the ocean any time at the present. But um, that's why reef safe sunscreens are called as they are because they don't have those particular chemical filters in them. They've probably got mineral sunscreens in them and the mineral sunscreens do come off more easily so they'll probably rub off in the water anyway. So again, that's something you need to make your own mind up on. But scent-free sunscreen, that is a really good idea. And um, do look on the sunscreens to see if they have fragrance in the way of parfum is what it'll be called, or if they smell all lovely, they've probably got a lot of um, fragrance ingredients in them because fragrance can be irritating to the skin. So if you have sensitive skin, look for ones that haven't got fragrance in them. So sunscreens for darker skin. These are all ones that work really well on brown skin, on black skin, and won't give you that kind of ashy tinge that you can get from mineral sunscreens or many sunscreens. Um, there's e-cooking. This is a fab Danish brand with very natural ingredients, nothing wrong with naturals, and it goes on really easily. You can see it absolutely vanishes into the skin. No hint of a color on that. And this one, which I've mentioned before, though, if I'm chopping these up, it may be on another video. This is the YSL Pure Shots Air Thin UV Defender. That's great on dark skin. Um, so is this La Roche-Posay XL Antelios. It looks quite white and creamy when it comes out, but it vanishes into the skin. So does the Beauty Pie and this air gel, this foamy one from Heliocare. I reckon the water gel would be pretty good, though I haven't actually had a dark skin friend try that yet, so I don't know. And the Eucerin Pigment Control, that is good too. So these are all ones that will work well on dark skin. The Murad Invisiblur, the one I haven't got here, is great as well. That um, has a sort of mattifying effect and it's clear, absolutely no color to it at all. So that again is great on a darker skin. So I'm not sure about this one. I should think that would be fine too, but I've got this one. <laughs> this is the Murad Vitamin C with SPF 30, but I've got this to remind me to talk about the Murad one I haven't got. Right, that's that lot. Then here I've got some specialist uh, skincare brands which all have great sunscreens, which you might not know. So um, I'll talk through them all. These are all kind of cosmeceutical brands, you could call them, which you find in skin clinics. And the doctors who I work with for the treatments guide and the nurses and the skin experts, they all love these ones. IS Clinical Extreme Protect SPF 30. This is quite a, a thick formulation. I find this uh, really good if I know I'm gonna be spending a lot of time outside. It's thick, creamy, 
it's really protective feeling. Where's a bit? I haven't put some sunscreen on already, but um, you feel really secure with that one on. Also, with um, there's this brand Epiance Ultra Shield SPF 50, much the same. Um, it's a slightly lighter formulation. I think this would be a better kind of day cream option. I'm not sure about this under makeup. I like to wear it as a really sort of thick layer when I'm not putting makeup on top. Um, this spreads more freely than that one. <laughs> this, uh, like the Eyes Clinical, this is a tinted version. What's it called? Daily Shield Tinted SPF 50. You don't really need uh, makeup with this because it is so thick and tinted. It's quite, um, quite sort of pinky beige. This one is possibly my favourite. This is Tioxane Advanced Perfecting Shield SPF 30. It's a really lovely cream. It's a day cream, it's hydrating, it's got antioxidants and it's got good protection, protection. But because it feels so lovely, I'm really happy to slather this on in good quantities every day. That is <laughs> empty as you might be able to hear. Um, Medicaid Advanced Total Protect, that again is more of a day cream with SPF in it, which is a slightly different creature to an SPF with um, hydrating properties, but you know, Medicaid are really thorough with their products, so I totally trust that. SkinCeuticals, this is their advanced brightening UV defense sunscreen. This is good. This is quite lightweight, so you know, again, if you're not wanting something that feels remotely heavy on the skin, it spreads, it's, um, it sinks in well, really easy to tolerate. Um, and this has got tranexamic acid in it. If you're um, a geeky skin person and you know about tranexamic acid as one of the ingredients that can help reduce pigmentation, it's quite trendy at the moment. Um, we need more research on it to know whether it really does do a great deal, but that has tranexamic acid in it. So it's new and cool. This one with its back to you, Viscoderm Hydro Booster. Now you won't know this one. This comes from the company that makes Profilo, the injectable moisture treatment. Uh, that has a sister brand called Viscoderm Hydro Booster and this is Viscoderm Photo Protection which I only discovered recently but it's an absolutely lovely cream and really nicely formulated. The idea is it's very hydrating for the skin as well as SPF 50. I mentioned this earlier in case um, I've gone and split these videos up. I'll mention this again. This is the PCA skin. It's super lightweight, weightless, broad spectrum protection, SPF 45. Uh, the kind of thing you can get men to wear because it really does vanish into the skin. Um, not that men are good about wearing moisturising sunscreens, but um, I find that's an easier one often to persuade men to wear. A couple of Paula's Choice ones. This is the uh, Super Light Daily Wrinkle Defence. That is um, SPF 30. This is a, again, this is a, headlined as a moisturiser, skin restoring moisturiser, but with broad spectrum SPF 50 and you know, Paula's products are really thoroughly done so that will give you lovely protection as well. It's quite hard to know what to choose among this but it really is a, a matter of finding one that suits your budget, that sounds right with the kind of stuff you want to use, whether that's mineral or chemical sunscreens or more natural ones. It really is a personal choice in the end, as I've said before, as long as you're using something, I will be happy. Anyway, these are the brands I thought you might not know. Oh, and let's pop a Heliocare one in because I haven't. Um, an oil-free gel, that's a really lightweight one. I've got various others up there, but it's the Fluid Cream. Uh, this also comes in different colours of tint. And Heliocare is a specialist skincare brand. All the skin clinics absolutely love this brand. Brilliant products, really carefully formulated, full of antioxidants and stuff, as well as um, effective sun filters. So that one will see you good too. I think that's enough of those. Then, what have we got less? A SkinCeuticals Eye SPF because you know obviously you should put SPF all over your face and that includes around the eyes but if a product is fragranced or if it's too slippery um, very few brands make a specific around the eye sunscreen so that's the SkinCeuticals one and that's great and obviously it's fragrance free because you don't want any fragrance around your eyes but you do want sun protection. Now these are three brands you might not know, which I thought I should mention. Skinnies is a fascinating one. It's made, it's a very concentrated product, it says, you know, unlike most products which are telling you to use more and more. So you only need 
a tiny bit, I'm going to do a tiny bit because I've already got sunscreen all over me, there's no water in it and it spreads and spreads and spreads, which you think, yeah, right. But in fact, you only need a tiny bit to go all over your face. And what you should do if you're curious about this is look at their Instagram because they've got a fascinating video on there of a woman under one of those lights that shows you the sun damage in your face and it shows where you've blocked the UV light from hitting your face. So it shows her putting this on her face and quite how effectively just a pea-sized blob of it covers the whole face. Anyway, you need to learn to put it on like that, but that clearly works. This brand I love, Evie, um, Daily Defence Face Mousse. I shall show you this, even if it means I'm gonna get it everywhere. It's a, a mousse, so it comes out like that and it squashes down <laughs> um, and spreads really well, sinks in really nicely. This probably should have been in the dark skin video as well, because I think that would go really well. And that is really nice. It's got a special kind of technology to it that means it binds into the surface of the skin and clings on there really well. It's a patented medical type of technology, so it does actually do what it says it does. Um, and this one, which I was sent to try, but I'm mostly going to complain about it. It's, it's all <sighs> sells itself as being very clean and green. And I know if you like that kind of thing, that that's fine. But um, also, I thought, hang on, is it is it half empty? But then look, this is a, um, it's called Salty and it's a London brand and it's a new brand and kind of good on them for doing a brand of sunscreen because we all need more sunscreen. But this is this is 50 mils. Um, th this is also 50 mils. So it's kind of selling itself to be more than you're actually gonna get uh, if you put them side by side. And you know, the cream is nice enough. It also promises to enhance your tan as well as um, protecting you. And maybe that's just being honest because a lot of people still want to tan, but a tan is a sign of skin damage. So really we should be thinking about ways of protecting ourselves rather than going for the tan. But um, maybe I'm being unfair anyway, that if you are a person who likes clean and green stuff. I find the whole clean beauty stuff just more irritating than it's worth. Also, it makes a big deal of being cruelty free. You know, no product is designed to be pro cruelty. You know, there are laws against animal testing, all the rest of that. That's an argument for another day. But selling a product as cruelty free when nothing is pro cruelty, none of these products here, they could all claim to be cruelty free. I just, I just slightly take issue with that. And then this is one that got left behind. This is the Dermalogica Dynamic Skin Recovery, which is a nice product, and I should probably put it in one of the other categories, but this annoyed me because it's full of essential oils and it smells amazing, but um, if your skin is at all uh, sensitive, then essential oils are not a great thing to have in a product. I put it all over my face, I found my eyes were smarting, so I'm sorry Dermalogica, that one did not hit the spot for me. And then, and then we got some products that you can use to top up your sunscreen during the day. Because the, the thing is, you know, we put sunscreen on in the morning, if you've put it on at breakfast time, is it still going to be doing the job at lunchtime? You no, know, you should be topping it up, but none of us are going to stop in the middle of a busy working day, well, <laughs> supposing we ever get back to the offices um, and take off our makeup and put on sunscreen. But these are the kind of things you can use to top up sunscreen during the day. This is a Zeo Health um, a powder sunscreen. There's a powder capsule that screws into the bottom of that. Zeo is a terrific brand. It's the kind of thing that skin clinics sell and you have to be talked through it by somebody who, um, who is selling the stuff. You can't just go out and buy it on the internet, but you brush and can you see the powder? The powder comes out. So you get a fairly fine spray of powder. That is great if you are somebody like me who has an oily uh, complexion or centre panel and is constantly wanting to powder things down. This is the other great um, powder, what do you call it, powder sunscreen. It's called Brush on Block, Brush on Block SPF 30. Again, there's powder in here. This is mineral sunscreen and you, you brush and brush and out it comes. So, you know, you use that to top up your sunscreen. I wouldn't want to rely on this 
for pure protection on its own and then you oh, I don't know do you twist to get it back down probably slide it up there we go because I wouldn't be confident of getting a full cover of SPF 30 from that um, this is Kate Somerville's high protection uncomplicated spray um, which is great you open it for a start and then spray and that is a good fine spray so you can spray that all over this would probably do you just about on its own maybe not um, it calls itself a soft focus makeup setting spray so <laughs> there's another reason to use it use it on top of your makeup and it will give you that lovely blurry soft focus finish which bounces the light back so you look more radiant and lovely plus it's protective but that you could carry around for protection during the day and this the, this lots of people asked me to talk about this the um anita sternum dr anita sternum decree which is a day shield i hugely expensive this is 60 quid i think it's even more than that and uh it's a really fine spray which is lovely and you can just spray it like that and from her website i understand that this is a perfectly thorough covering of spf 50 spf 30 sorry SPF 30, I'm not sure I would want to rely on that all day. Maybe that's me having trust issues rather than the product itself, but I'd want to be careful with that. But those would all be very good options for a midday touch up without disturbing your makeup. And then there's one extra thing I wanted to talk about, which was these Helia Care capsules, and they are a supplement and they're a kind of edible sunscreen and you i wouldn't take these instead of uh wearing sunscreen but they support the action of the sunscreen from the inside they contain uh an antioxidant called fern block which all the helio care products have in in topical form as well um which is very resistant to the sun and i had never quite known whether to take these seriously or not until i was at a doctor's conference last year and sat through a really interesting seminar um, with a doctor who was talking about protecting the skin. It wasn't just about a sponsored thing or anything. It wasn't, it wasn't sponsored at all. And she was saying how good this was. And I stuck my hand up and said, what, seriously? And then several of the other doctors in the room said, yeah, they absolutely love it. Because when they've got patients who aren't very compliant with using sunscreen or who won't use it at all, uh, then this is a really good idea. So if you want extra 360 protection, you could have this uh, as well as putting sunscreen on the top. <laughs> so <laughs> you'll be glad to hear that's about all I've got to say about sunscreen for the time being. But um, I hope it made sense. The main message is just wear it. You know, it will just help your skin. It will stop immediate damage. It will stop future damage and it will and you know if you're contemplating tweakments of any kind you know you've got to start with the skincare you've got to get your skin in good shape and keep it like that otherwise you know you're spending all this money having treatments and then not protecting the skin uh, in between that seems to be madness so from me and all these sunscreens i hope that was useful <laughs>